graduated from Simon Fraser University with a BA in English and received the Yingcheng Creative Writing Student Award. He is the author of God and Pain, which won the Lambda Literary Award for Best Jane Fiction and was chosen as one of the top 100 books of, the, of 2015 by the Golden Mail. His work has also been in media across Canada. He is the author of Poetry Book War Slash Torn by Book Hub Press, which received the 2020 Barbara Gittings Honor Book Award from the Stonewall Book Awards, and the children's book, The Name I Call Myself. Hassan lives in Vancouver with his husband and wonderful child, Malik. Thank you so much. Thank you so much as well. That was an amazing introduction. What a wonderful, I'm so lucky and grateful to have you with me today for sure. Um, I also would like to begin by acknowledging that I work with the Unseen Territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Kwatlin, Katsi, Seniamo, and Tuasin First Nations. I uh, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, my sister, my family, my friends, colleagues, I'm so happy and grateful for you all. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Masi Books and Raphael. Thank you so much uh, for the space and for having me today. Uh, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, 2019 has been a year when Karen and I knew we really wanted to have a baby. Uh, we were together long enough that we were ready for that. Uh, we always loved each other and we couldn't imagine being with anyone else but each other. Um, that same year, my poetry book, War Torn, was released, and I had already thought about writing a follow-up book. I knew from the very beginning that a vocal cord had to be about my love story with Tarn and our desire to start a family together. I knew that I wanted to shift away from the trauma and focus on the love that blossomed with Tarn, as well as what made our love and our journey so special. I wanted the, the book to be a collection of love letters to both Tarn and Tanali and our son. I wanted this book to be both personal and universal, a story of a couple who love each other so much that they want to start a family together. Um, local Court is a unique, but because it highlights the surrogacy process, the parenting process, and how two men can come together to raise their child. The, the writing process started at the beginning of our journey, and the poems continued developing until Malik turned one. So I was writing these poems as I was going through all the experiences with myself, with Tarn. It started with us remembering that my sister-in-law, Kieran, had offered to be our surrogate at our engagement and wedding. Then it turned into a question, and she immediately said, oh, absolutely, agreeing to do this for all of us. I was uh, writing while we researched the fertility clinic, while saving up the money, and for the whole IVF process. I had all, I had all these ideas in my head. I was writing small notes and letters to Malik before he was even fetus. I was writing uh, the poem Star Child, hoping that they could hear my words. Malik! <laughs> I wrote uh, poems continuously highlighting the excitement and fears that Malik, Malik, <laughs> that I shared with her. I included uh, the Dear Child poems throughout the collection, and these were my love letters to our son, Malik. I really wanted to express, really wanted to express my love to both Malik and Tarn. So while, you know, War Torn, my first book was about, you know, struggling with conflicting identities and finding reconciliation, and both accords was well, simply about love between the two men who fulfilled the dreams of becoming parents with the help of the most amazing surrogate. The umbilical cord essentially becomes a feeling that binds us all together. So the, this umbilical cord was a collaboration with so many people who wanted to make this book the best that it could be. Uh, working with Book Hub Press has really been wonderful. Jay and Hazel Millar gave me the creative freedom to bring out the best book possible. Uh, they allowed me to work with my amazing friend Shazi Hafiz Ramji, who is the most incredible poetry editor. Shazi is the one that suggested that I incorporate family photos in the book, um, so it would become like a family photo album. Um, I was on board with it right away. At first, I was kind of hesitant because I'm like, oh, like, would Tarn be okay with photos and everything? And then Tarn said, sure, let's do it. So, um, and then, so none of these ideas would have come together without the brilliant work of our amazing graphic designer, uh, Garrett Lind of Lind Design. I'm also uh, thankful for everybody who made this book possible, the copy editor, uh, uh, Shannon Webbs, and every single person who made this possible. 
I wrote a book called The Message of Hope and Love to all the parents out there. With this book, I'm giving a glimpse of our journey. I don't think I should have been able to write about this in any genre or form. Poetry is the only form that gives me the comfort to open up about my own story. So I'm really super excited and I hope that readers you know, will experience love and magic and the joy that it brought to me writing this book. To my heart and soul, Malik and Tarn, you are my vessel, my strength, my love, and my everything. I wrote this book for you. Love you. I'll read some, some poems. Not like, I want you to listen to me. Come here. <laughs> This is for you, Habibi, okay? <laughs> this book is for you. Dear child, <laughs> once, once upon a time, your Baba fell in love with your dad. We got married and dreamt of having a baby. Yeah. A roller coaster of emotions and feelings. We were always hopeful. <laughs> Two men can't have babies. Two men can't reproduce. Oh, the baby's gonna grow up confused. Shame on us. Sodomy is a sin. Everyone says your baby's beautiful. He's ass ugly. Gays can adopt if they want. What about surrogacy? You can't afford it. Shame. Paying a surrogate is illegal in Canada. Who's gonna even want to carry your baby? We'll keep dreaming instead. The surrogates. Sperm plus egg equals a baby. Two men physically can't have babies. We don't deny the biological factors. You can adopt, you know, an endless process, one document after another, costs even higher. We wanted our own. If you ever want a child, I'm here for you. Four years washed over, who's gonna carry our child? We asked friend A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. We understood their reasons. We were aware of the responsibilities. Why don't we remember the K? Dear child, you're smiling at me, my heart is flowing, I can't explain. It's still a surreal feeling, I feel like I'm in a dream. Thirty-four weeks and two days. It's been two days, you and I trying to rest on the waiting room bed. It's been two hours, oxytocin flowing within her blood. Get out. We understood her emotions, we kept our distance. Oh. Three hours passed, her silence and light screams. She's in active labor now. At 4 a.m., it was a loudest scream. We walked into the room, cervix dilated, slowly, Malik's head. He arrived at 4 or 9 a.m., nope. a surreal feeling. He's awake, half asleep, seemingly looks lifeless flesh, surrounded by nurses, together as intended parents. We cut the umbilical cord, the flesh had a soul. Dear child, as I'm writing this poem, you are standing next to me, you are making Mouse smile, you are trying to type for me. Will you be a writer like me? <laughs> Dear child, your dad and I fought hard against hatred with love. You don't have any regrets. To think that I couldn't have I could have been killed once. God had another plan for all of us. Now I cherish my life with you. So um, we, he was born six weeks early, so we spent some time in the NICU, the new, neonatal intensive care. So I wrote some poems about that. Fears and doubts trigger us. Our inner voices questioning our baby's health. Three pounds and a half. Will he be okay? We ask that question endless times. Are you afraid? I just wanted him to be okay. The umbilical cord was sentimental. I attached our hearts to Malik. I felt like he was living inside me since the day Kieran was pregnant. I didn't have to carry him or give birth to have those feelings. It's normal to worry. Should I be worrying all the time? He's gonna be fine. Watermarks. Your face turns red, pearl droplets washing over. You have been fed, you have been burped, your diaper has been changed. You 
God holds you. Let me hold you. Let me tell you everything will be all right. Let me be tapping your back gently. Let me, all right, let's try this, okay? <laughs> you are bundled up. I hold you on my chest. Two fleeting minutes and you are deep asleep. Our touch is more magical than water. Your smile, my kangaroo. You don't like sleeping in your bassinet. You want to be in my arms or your dad's. The hospital gave us kangaroo outfit, a, a, a clothing pouch with straps, tied to protect and keep you within. The design promotes skin to skin. Within me, all the oxytocin feels. The more, the better. I'm like the kangaroo holding his child. You are trying to fight your sleep. You want to be present in the moment. Your smile gives me life when I'm low. I, I pray to God to protect you, my kangaroo. <laughs> Dear child, I could scream and let the whole world know you are our euphoria. We want you to be happy always, as long as you're feeling it too. We are on cloud nine with you. Alexa, my child sleeps in his crib, the room 100 feet away from me. Years ago, he used walkie-talkies. Amazon Alexa is amazing, eh? I drop in wirelessly to hear Malik, the soothing fur from his bassinet. Crying interpretations. Some cries are hunger. Some cries are poop discomfort. Some cries are purple. Some cries are red. Some cries are lonely. Some cries are loud. Some cries are whines. Some cries are gassy. Some cries are laughs. Some cries are pain. Some cries are constipation. Some cries are needy. Some cries are urine. Some cries are thirst. Some cries are fatigue. Some cries are cold, some cries are warm, some cries are confusing, some cries make sense, some cries are clean, some cries are dirty, some cries are real, some cries are fake. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, Todd wrote a poem for Malik, and I wanted to include it in this book. I've never done that before, but I, I'm gonna read it. He wrote this one, actually. And I gave him credit too, by the way. <laughs> Malik, written by John Kerr. Daddy and Baba change looms near. The hum of his tiny voice. The beginning of a new chapter. A little bit of both of us. Diaper to be changed. Baba and Daddy. Yay. I know, right? He's actually a good writer, too. I'm going to read the, the final few poems and then we'll uh, switch over. Do we have time? Yeah. Uh, this one is called I Am a Father. I remember one time you were carrying me on your shoulders. I was two years old. I could still feel safe in my memory. You would take me to the store to buy some candy. You gave me everything I wanted. You bought me everything I needed. You were the best friend who loved me but couldn't accept everything. I was young when you told me you would pay for my wedding. In fact, I insisted that I would pay for my own wedding. I was once into acting and wanted to win an Oscar. You told me you dreamed that I would become a famous author. We shared a mutual dream, but when I fulfilled it, you weren't there. Instead, you stood with them, ashamed of me when you knew all along. I'm not going to say that I'm going to be a better father than you, now that God has gifted me with your grandson, Malik, because you were a great father, and I'm so thankful to be your son. You saw me in your grandson, and I will always speak well of you. I will always teach my son that you are a great father. I can't remember the last time I was in your arms. Don't worry. I still pray that we will meet once again, even for just one minute. A quick way for all the years. 20 years, 20 some years of a father and son bond. I promise you that I will always be my son's baba. I will always support him in any path he wants to take. I don't blame you for standing with them. I am a father and you are mine. Um, 
I'm a mother. When I was young, I wanted to be a girl. I like playing with Barbie dolls. I love belly dancing. I love imitating divas. I had baby Barbies. I knew I wanted to be a mother. Yet I'm a man with motherly feelings. I moved on with those feelings. I had to be a man and marry a woman. I could see, I could only be a father, not a mother. I didn't have breasts, I had empty nipples. I realized I didn't have to wear a dress to be a mother. It's not an appearance, it's a feeling. I've always been the one worrying about everyone. I could be a, a man who loves another man. When daddy's at work, I am drawn to you the way that will record is a feeling. I'm a mother. Uh, dear child, your parents switch roles. We are a mother and father. Our family is unique like us. God brought us all together. The umbilical cord is forever. And I'll read one more for now. Okay. Umbilical cord. This is the title poem. This is the thread of life, a lifetime commitment to my ancestors and genes and milky white. Your dad's legacy is an egg. X, Y, Y, X, X, Y, Y, X. X, Y, Y, X, X, Y, Y, X, X, Y, Y, X. Please attach. Sleepless nights, interfaith prayers from mama and mom. Surrogate who couldn't wait to tell us the news. She secretly took the pregnancy test. I was speechless. I felt the umbilical cord grafting to my flesh. I felt your heart beat long before the ultrasound. Tender particles of roses fold on our heads. The gender reveal ceremony made me wonder. My heart knew I wanted you, Malik, but you could have been Malika. There were fears and doubts intervening aggressively. We were thankful for you regardless of your sex. The confetti was blue. The umbilical cord that kept us floating on the king's throne. You were ready for us, as long as we were ready for you. Inside the womb, you were growing, becoming both of us. The umbilical cord is thousands of years of intersectionality. Roots rooting in the Eucharites and Singapore rivers. As the water waves through the Pacific Ocean, your dad and I stood on the bridge waiting for you. I met him on April 9, 2011, when I saw you waiting for us. You didn't want to wait anymore. 32 weeks, four days, six weeks early. You just wanted to be with your dad and Baba. This was your umbilical cord, Bob, Baba and dad. Cut through it. The string which light flowed through, blood vessels pumped through your heart. Your cry was so soft yet loud enough to announce arrival. You have my eyes and your dad's ears and nose. You have my forehead and your dad's light hair. You are us and we are you in every single way possible. Dear child, this, this book is a letter of hope. Like the umbilical cord that kept us dreaming. Someday, the three of us We'll stand together on the bridge. We will watch our rivers converge with the ocean. Thank you so much. Oh. I was like, if today's his day, he can make a noise. It doesn't bother me. So it's about me anyway. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Malik, for both of your performances. <laughs> sitting honestly. Thank you. But it's it's really interesting because I guess you can trace a couple of different trajectories with my book. And there is one that when I read it I I was surprised that it mapped on to Christ and Week Wars. So I'm going to share that today. Okay. Expecting. I arrive as a person of vomit to rest her throat. Pith growing in the marshy confines of her belly, tethered to her navel and her game of tin can telephone. I kick, she rubs. Baba lays down his head and hears with tremor, plays basil pin from the other end. Her blood tests anemic. She is fed racks of citron lamb, fish stew, wonton soup, uncooked oysters, and chamomile tea by grandmother. 
Eggs back, six hard-boiled eggs, and a whole watermelon each day. The midwife's Dutch science, drunk to the obstetrician, that four of us was inspired in the delivery room. Yay demands for a grandson bearing his own name. She gains 60 pounds. I come out a shriveled prune and careless, red as a blood orange, dying chick ringed by a, by a chorus of waffle vultures. Threaded to an ivy from diffusing water and infant formula. They are generous with their gifts and pleasantries. Donate old comforters for diapers. I wear Lao hand stitched socks and sweater. Our family will finally have a doctor. Here's money for a piano. Our little girl should take ballet class. I love her toes. Yay, Elise. Face puffy and coarse, like a pomelo with dewy eyes. Mama trains my body, furls me in a blanket, rolled so tight, there will be no room for mistakes. Mother explains men. You thought you'd be happy now if you're fine. This past summer in bed, you pictured yourself coming out of an open window to nowhere. Your first summer spent away from home. She said she wouldn't watch him throw her future away, waste 17 years of thankless upbringing on the impact talent was writing. If you're going to do it, she says, leave. So you did. And anyway, she tells you, you'll never find work as a writer. Now you have four jobs, and she tells you to quit them, lest you'll fall behind in school, that no men will want to date you if they see how you write about your parents. Now that you're capable of having intimate relationships with anyone, you try. She's the one who made you emotionally scarred. You want to tell her that. Instead, you say over the phone, great, I'll take a clear day. Lane Roots, from my friend Ashley Han. First breakfast since moving to a place of my own. Coffee in a press peanut butter on waffles, stack of back issues piled higher than the railings I lean on, to watch the man walk down the back lane, naked from the waist up, sipping mojitos. I wrap the rocks you gave me in green cotton cloth, carry them on the plane back from Waterloo to 24-hour cafes and street curves, where I spent my nights thinking about people far away. Amethyst, a soothing purple to relax me. Blackstone to revive me. Offer courage and protection. Carnelian for when I have writer's block. Months of no poem when I'm afraid to call myself poet much longer. Petrified wood from the Greek petrol. Wood turned into stone for laying roots, which I'm doing now. You gave me unicite. Paint within green, harboring love and kindness, which you taught me. I've laid them down on my bedside table, knowing I can stay, knowing I can place them down and not fear losing them. Because when I'm full of fear and panic, petrified wood is said to bring me safety, ground me here in my new home, where you're always welcome. Balcony. To be a part of summer's rain and be sheltered. To share a meal on the balcony with a friend. To have company for the first time since I moved here. To have birds that wake me. A wood white butterfly touring the fence. A tenant who waters the garden every morning and tends to pot growing in a pot. Morning dew lying in clotheslines like strings of pearls. I'm never lonely. We share Bombay potatoes in my first su successful attempt at Mujadara after eight failed tries. Citrus steeped in green tea poured over ice. Earlier that day, I took a cutting knife to the lettuce leaves growing in the garden, being sure not to scrape the stem. Soon, tomatoes will blush under the heat. We'll harvest them with the potatoes and squash. Toss them with seasoned onions from dirt to oven to a ceramic serving bowl made of clay I scooped 
Springtime Hazel 1. The color of plum blossoms tames my dream. Light shines the wallpaper. Time falls in gradients down the hourglass. Flip, flop, flip, flop. The mechanic heartbeat of a petal falling. In my dreams, the deceased shadow of a country laid to rest. I, Isabella, was born to a cradle full of tender springs, a white flower in dreams. Two, the rhododendron and explosion of blooms where a dog peed last winter, pink before, now blue. A parcel arrives wrapped in blue flax paper with the word coda. The silhouette of the bird shudders and falls from behind closed shutters. Souvenir from my mother's trip to Africa. Seven ivory elephant figurines. Tell me, does it hurt the ground or the tree if you're too extracted by its roots? Three. Again today, someone has asked me where I'm from. I am of this earth. My mother's womb, I say. Plum blossoms don't fall on a late Sunday morning. It's gray clearing. Each day, I aspire to be more like water, the kind that can be reached into and still flow. I leave an armchair out in the back alleyway. Then, I leave myself out. We wait for dusk to fall, like driftwood waiting to be softened by the rain. Four. Thin scrolls of rice paper placed before me, a topography of Asia. <coughs> I practice blotching my first eight characters in Chinese, turning ripples into tears. A map disintegrates with the stroke of a fine horse A holy place, the toothed basilica of Shoshan, where I looked with my father the last time. Beyond the one-way curvature of a railway track, I am chugging out a trailer. Only a plum blossom emerges. The rarefied outlines of a country I once called home. Five. Dwindling candle, ticking flame. The plum blossoms are dying. Light remains in the closed shutters of my eyelids. Autumn sunshine pulls through the rims of a glass mug. A robin appears from the last sketch of a retracted spray. Here it's morning. Not where she is. My grandmother is dying, and I am in full bloom. Last one. The daughters go back and read the dedication of this book. We're scared. But words said and words we knew without needing to say. Last one. Serenade no number one in some dollars. We're scared. Children are born with a circadian rhythm of sunflowers. When they laugh, their eyes saw the distance between noon and night, turn to where the sun shines the brightest. Their arms are like covered grass, outstretched to where the simplest things, a morsel of sunflower jelly, and some butter. Oh. Light is a matter not taught for those blessed with the heads of a thousand tiny flowers and the inflorescence of tears to make the whole world clear. Like like the sun like never meant to repress them. Like Blow into your hand like the petals of the different hues, and you will see the sky in pink, rouge, terracotta gold, the sunset you and I have created from blooms. Tournesol is a French word meaning to turn with the sun, and in Lumiere Cardu, a lost art, to find it again, you just have to kneel at a child's eye level and look, really look, focusing closely on what they're trying to show you. Because one doesn't have to be made of glass to let light in. Those who came before us left with a graft of their stock to plant for another season, walked for miles on gravel only to be replaced by the wave of walking and sand that having absorbed the intensity of stars now makes up the desert. 
The average sunflower takes 60 to 85 days to pollinate, 100 days to grow seeds. Only young flowers will. Only young flowers have to. The mature way for bees to come to them. Do they ever berate themselves the way we do? Upon leaving behind a measure of time, yet some call the West, and some call serendipity, never being able to look back. The sun fits 960,000 suns at its core. That's 1.969 times 10 to the power of 9 sunflowers per square mile on Earth. 1.89024 times 10 to the power of 14 seeds I will plant with you for every bird and every person for you. If I gave you a seed, would you promise to throw it away so that it has a chance to make the world better? Because some gifts are not meant for hanging on to. Because we'll have many more years to stand the grass in the yellow. Because the word because is a beautiful word. You once used to explain to me why some flowers are your favorite flower. When you smile, you make the whole world blue for the faces of sunflowers, for the people who hurt you and love you the same. So apparently, um, he had told the friends at SFU that, oh, I met this guy, Tarn, he's like amazing. I'm gonna marry him, and like, we just met like in that week. <laughs> so um, fast forward, like I think it was maybe two a year, yeah, maybe yeah, two yeah, years, and we were already engaged, and you know, we had already, you know, he won my heart or whatever. <laughs> 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 you know, I love him so much. Um, we were running to have a friend from SFU who told me that story, and he's like, literally, he was right, because now you guys are. And you should be married, so he knew it. <laughs> I love you. Persistent. Yeah, very yeah. persistent. Um, this poem is uh, for uh, our surrogate Karen, my sister in law. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. But this one's Case for Karen. Karen knew, Karen is kind, Karen is a ray of light, Karen is kindred heart, Karen is kindness. Malik is king, Malik ends with a K. Industrial scissors. It took years to heal. I tried to walk down the forest, full of prickles, impossible to move forward. The choice was in my hands. I had to pave the way. I glanced behind and saw a tarn, industrial scissors in hand. Together we cut through the prickles. Our way became clear. I threw the pills in the garbage. I never looked back. I found myself. Daycare. Time is a fleeting space between us. Months pass like seconds, feeling separated, tears dwelling. I write this poem as a parent, and anxieties overflowing me. 
I miss you when you're learning. I'm writing this poem when time is perpetual. Our emotions are cyclical. I wrote this poem outside. My heart, I seesaw of emotions until I saw your smile outside. <laughs> uh, formula milk. Some babies are breastfed like I was, others are formula fed like tarn. Some say that breast milk is better for babies, sometimes that's not an option. Our baby is formula, formula milk fed, positioning Malik upright, supporting his neck and back with one hand, the other hand holding the bottle. Mal Malik's lips latch on the bottle's nipple. He starts to drink, he stops as I angle the bottle. He needs breaks in between his feet. I have him stay upright as I burp him, gently rubbing his back. First attempt, second attempt, then a loud burp. We were both happy. Mm. <laughs> Netflix and parenting. <laughs> when it was just you and I, it was Netflix and chill. Our lips sliding over our tongues, our bodies like clay ceramics, morphing into one. A surrogate who wiped the question mark. Malik in his bassinet sleeping. We turn on Netflix in between, binge watch every show. This is a new light as the credits roll in black. What should we watch next? Uh, we have a lot to watch, actually. <laughs> <laughs> our emails and photos. Yes, I'm that kind of parent who has created an email account for Malik. I have shared this idea with Karn. Habibi, let me, let, let's make an email account for Malik. Let's send him photos and stuff throughout his childhood. Wow, this is a great idea. When he turns 16, we'll share the, the account with him. When he turns 16, inshallah, wahi guru, he will see everything unfold until that age. His childhood and baby adventures, all the special moments and photos. I want to see the diamond magic in his eyes. I can't wait to see his face. Yes, I'm that kind of parent. Wow. <laughs> uh, lullabies. My baby, my sweet Malik, let me wipe your tears. Let me hold you. Everything will be okay. So long as you're in my arms, you will grow and thrive. You will shine like a star. Our baby, our King Malik, our King Malik, you gave us hope, our love. Let us hold you. Everything is bright. So long as you're in our arms, you are every bit of us. You are our dream come true. Our prince and king, our sun and moon, our night and day, our east and west, our heart and soul, our apple and orange, our baby and child, our Habibi and Hayati. Yeah. One, two, three, four, here we go. Cheer up, be happy, smile, don't cry. Sit, five, six, seven, eight, don't frown, upside down. Smile, nine, ten, Smile, our angel. Thank you so much. sister, uh, who's always been so supportive, you know, since the very beginning, even when I first came out here, she's always been my, you know, my, my ray of sunshine, you know, and boyfriend from Riley is amazing as well, and all our family and colleagues and loved ones, so yeah, I'm grateful for them, they, they make me quiet today, for sure. Right, I feel like, you know, when you've got so many people supporting you, you know, when a book comes out, it's a celebration of them as well. Sure. Alright, um, next question. 
both parenting and the act of, write, of writing poetry are rooted in generosity and acts of unconditional care. Yeah. How do you make time for both? Do you ever find that the lessons you get from parenting ever influence your writing and like vice versa? For sure. I mean, you know, like working, like I have a full time job, you know, full time day yeah. job and everything. I take my laptop with me to work every day and I'm always like typing away like I, and you know, I Priyanka, Priyanka can, can attest to that for sure. Um, and um, yeah, like I think I, having an amazing husband like Tarn, like he lets me write, like so he lets me do like my writing stuff and he's the most amazing dad. So he'll like take care of Malik while, you know, like I did the word bank over like festival and other stuff as well. Like I'm very lucky in that sense. Uh, because he gives me time to do, you know, what I love to do, right? You know, so yeah, so like I come home and uh, I'll be working on my writing and uh, and you know try to edit something or have a deadline. I have to get that done right away for sure. Um, yeah, and then I'll you know I'll take advantage of all my breaks that work for sure. And I'll work on that writing as well too for sure. Yeah, definitely. I hear that it's good to have an amazing partner. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah. And shout out to Tarn for honestly, without him I don't know where I am today for sure. He's the best for sure. Yeah, Love you, Tarn. <laughs> Love you. Uh, so we heard a little bit about the, you know, story of your book, but I'm interested to know because you published other books of poetry before. Yeah. But um, given the intimate nature of this one, was the experience in writing um, umbilical cord different from War Torn? Yeah, very different actually. I think with War Torn, I was going through it some time where I was just really struggling to come in terms of my own sexuality. Okay. Um, at that time, I was just like really, was just in a dark spot as well too, like you know, trying to find the balance and trying to figure out who I was really. Like, um, so of course the poems reflected on, you know, it gave platform to the oppressed voices as well, like queer folks from the Middle East who don't really have a platform. So I wrote those poems as a, as, as a way of like, sort of like inspiration. I wanted to give them the voices as well. Whereas, you know, and when a vocal card, when I was working on it, I was at a very happy place in my life where, you know, I have everything that I wanted, you know, I, Kieran was pregnant with Malik, so I was super happy about that. We were gonna have a baby, so it was all the excitement of becoming parents and you know, like that surreal feeling. So when I was writing on that, yeah, it was all like it was all my like my heart and soul in it as well. Um, whereas you know, War Torn did have a lot of like personal poems as well, but it was just um, they were much more you know sad. I mean, this poem has some bittersweet moments as well, you know, like the, and, and that's the reality of it, you know, like especially like as a being a queer parent, it's not gonna be like you know, it's, it's not going to be green grass all over, you know. There's going to be moments where there's going to be struggles and there's going to be times where, you know, it, and that's part of it, you know. I think, like, um, I'm grateful for every moment. Um, I knew, I knew I fell in love with this man and I knew that our family is going to be a message of hope and there's going to be, you know, we're different, of course, but at the same time, just like any other family, if you think about it, like, you know, sure, yeah, you know, you know we're two dads, but, but at the end of the day, parent, if parents are love, like, you can have mom and mom, mom and dad, uh, two dad, non-binary parents, you know, like all kinds of parents, you know? Um, and so, at the end of the day, as long as a kid is surrounded by, you know, parents that love him, and, you know, family that loves him, then that's really all I can ask for, for sure. Yeah. And I agree completely. And I think the reason that, you know, this book is so powerful for everyone reading it, but especially queer parents, is the fact that you are honest about, you know, the, the bittersweet moments. And so that, you know, it's really comforting to see that and be like, oh, I, you know, recognize my own experiences in this, but oh, there's also a way out, you know, there is a joy and there is that hope. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and it's, every day is a new, like, we just take it as, as every day, you know, like, it's just yeah. part of it. And, and just enjoy it, just like cherish every moment out there, you know, like yeah. the sad moments and the happy moments and the challenging moments, it's all part of the whole experience, you know, and that's, I'm grateful for, for it all. Yeah, and I really admire you for being able to, you know, be so positive. Yeah, and speaking of Malik, um, I was at your event for the Victoria Festival of Authors two weeks ago. And um, I think one of the most powerful things you shared during that event was about how Malik's birth came as a gift. You know, the bridger of two worlds united. Uniting the family, the ancestral and cultural heritage that is both yours and arms. So, would you like to tell us a bit more about the significance of that? Yeah, I mean, when I first met Tarn, like, I, I fell in love with him. I didn't know, like, who he was, you know, I just, like, was love at first sight. 
and then I learned, um, you know, that you know, it was, see, you know, I'm Muslim, you see, you know, but, but the thing is, like, our families are like one in the sense, like, that, you know, my mother-in-law, like, took me in from the very, very beginning. I moved in with her, and you know, here, and like, she treated me like her own son from day one, and she, you know, and it's, and you know, and I, I been to the Gurdwara, you know, like, and, and go there all the time, and you know, and Malik is. Is, is a bit of both of us. Malik is Sikh, uh, Muslim. Malik, Malik has both of our genes in it, you know. And uh, he's gonna learn both languages, like Punjabi and Arabic. We call it Arjabi, <laughs> um, you know. And uh, yeah, like he's just gonna be like that, you know. The message of he's gonna. I want to learn both, you know, embrace uh, both of our cultures, because you know, because Tan and I embrace both of our own cultures, you know. And and that's what I. That's why Tan and I have been together for that long because we we have the same values. And it's, you know, and even though we come from different backgrounds, but we just focus on what brings us together um, as a couple. And I think Malik is that, and now Malik is that bridge that even just gonna continue on. And he's just gonna continue, you know, learning the, our cultures and languages and, and be able to, you know, hopefully appreciate, you know, well, our both sides for sure, as much as we do for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think he will. I think he so. knows how lucky he is. <laughs> yeah, as we are so lucky too. He, knows. he loves his daddy so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about what's on the horizon for you. Do you have any, are you working on any current writing projects? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm actually, um, you know, ever since Malik came in the world, I've been working on a lot of children's books, like picture books. Um, my agent just sold a um, uh, book with uh, for Holiday House Books. It's coming yes. out. Thank you so much, uh, Banana Dream. But I also wrote um, two books as well. I'm working on right now, I'm trying to just like juggle between mm -hmm. them. Um, as well as I'm writing two novels. Uh, Felicity was an island, uh, and I just got an idea about the space between us. Of the next novel, the, the space between us, just an outline. Uh, but uh, Felicity was an island is, is right now working on the second draft of it, um, and it's basically it's just about um, it's set in uh, the eyes of a um, Iraqi Muslim woman um, and who lives in Detroit, um, and um, she. Her family like pushes her away because they're, they're trying to like get her, get back with her ex um, husband, um, and then she um, hears about because she she donates her ex to uh, uh, this gay couple. Then she hears about this island um, called Felicity Island, and at the time there's a lot of like um, in the states where there's a lot of like where gay people can't exist in the states. So Felicity Island becomes an island where it's like a, a, a queer only island. So then um, so then she pretends to be a, a queer just so she can escape her family only to uh, fall in love with a seemingly gay queer person over there. So it's a story about love, a story about acceptance, as, and, and identity as well too, for sure. I love that. And you aren't, you aren't busy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I do it, honestly. Sometimes I'm just like, I tire myself out, but I, I, I love, I love, I, I always have to do something. I'm always, otherwise, like, I don't know, right, Tarn? Like, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> my brain, like, I have ADHD, right? So, like, my brain always has to, like, I gotta be doing something, otherwise, like, I don't know, you know? Yeah. So, for sure. Yeah, so pre order this forthcoming novel. <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alright, so I have one more question for Tarn, and it's slightly longer. Um, so questions start. Um, so in the same way that Malik has opened up a space between your two worlds, um, your families to be filled with love, joy, and resilience. Both your parenting and your book have also opened up crucial spaces, essentially creating a world where your son can grow up in the accepting, nurturing, and supportive spaces to be who he wants, what he wants. Um, which you as a child have lacked. And your book too has been received and appreciated by so many queer Iraqi individuals thanking you for offering them the courage to express their voices, gender and sexual orientations. So what is then queer futurity to you? And how do you think it is connected to the present? What are your hopes, ambitions and fears for the future? A good question. Um, I think for me, like, what I hoped with, like, for example, the Google Accord is just to, like, kind of, like, give queer families a platform and that we that we exist. Um, you know, before actually, like, writing this book, I was trying to find a book that can speak for our experiences, but really, I couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And that just shows that there's a lack of um, representation for queer families. 
Um, and, and I know queer families are so, like, you know, we exist, they're, they're everywhere. Maybe it's not as common, you know, especially with surrogacy, it's not something that common, but it's, it's becoming, you know, more, more popular because the science has advancing. So I, I, I really hope that, you know, more books continue to represent uh, queer families. Um, I have other authors as well who will write books about that, queer parenting. Um, I hope that we can live in a world where we don't have to worry about, um, you know, discrimination anymore. That, that people respect other people's pronouns. Um, I think that's huge. Um, and that people understand other people's, like, what they're going through as well. And, and, and that we respect other people. And that there's no, um, you know, that there's no hatred. And I think, um, and no um, ignorance. I think, like, I'm hoping that one day that will just be a thing of the past as well, too. Um, what are my fears? I think, yeah, like, for me, like, I, like just like, I, you know, like, I just wanted to grow up and know that that we love him so much, you know. I mean, of course, my name is going to ask, like, oh, like, you know, about his, you know, mom or whatnot. But you know, we're going to be honest and transparent with him from the very beginning. And uh, and the thing is, like, he hears mom all the time, but he knows he has a baba and dada, and he and that, and I know, like, he, he just he loves the two of us very much, and he knows that we're his parents. I just yeah, I just hope that like um, we continue to. To off, you know, to, to open spaces for us and like queer families, we hear stories of them and that we're not a race. That it's just like this is just the beginning, and I hope that the book just opened the door for all that for sure. And yeah, I mean, my my, my biggest fear, I just hope, like of course, is like that he doesn't face bullying. But then we've all been bullied as kids. But I, but I, he knows we're gonna be strong and we're gonna stand with him against everything. And he, you know, we're gonna be his backbone always, and we're always gonna be there for him forever. I think everything you just said was so true and so important. I think the world can definitely be a more compassionate place. And while, you know, it's difficult to change things overnight, you know, small acts of kindness, your book, you know, just meeting you and your kindness does change, you know, our life changing on an individual level. I just, I just like, I just want, I, we need more love in this world, I think, and, you know, like, I mean, we've come, we've, we've come a long way, but I think we still have a lot more to do, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the world definitely needs more love, more sure. yeah. And, you know, like, I, I think about, like, social media, and, like, yeah. people's comments are, like, quite hurtful, like, sometimes I would, that's why I, um, I bet like I'm more, like, more pro like private in the sense like my Instagram is private and I, I have like my social media is private because I just I was more like I was, like you know because like if you see like more public there's it's a lot of like um, people like hating and uh, who don't understand queer families yeah so I think um, I um, you know I just um, I just hope like that there's more love and acceptance for sure. And I just want him to like you know know that he's loved. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> you can have it now. Well Shazia really loved all the ideas. This one, I think, War Torn took War Torn yeah. because I, this time with this book, I actually had all the like home titles. 
it was more structured with War Torn. It was very like, it was my first book, so I didn't really understand the whole structure and everything. But with this one, I, I, I knew what, I knew what this, the whole structure of this book from the very beginning. So it took a lot less uh, for the editing process, it was a lot more seamless for sure. So yeah, about eight months or so, I would say, for sure. So you know, you just like a baby editor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that too, yeah. And I, I read a lot of the Dear, uh, Dear Child poems to him when he was like, you know, like uh, sleeping and stuff or like I'm um, holding him. I read that time so that I, I, I would just keep it in my mind and I would write it after as well. So it's just like a, almost like a continuous thing happening to you for sure, you know, so. Yeah, I noticed that both of your poems talk about um, uh, like historical tension in your family, and I'm wondering how important poetry has been at processing that tension, and if it's possible to, I mean, if you go as far as to say the writing of poetry is a form of like seeking redemption uh, from that trauma. Yeah, I mean, poetry. My decision to write poetry, I guess, is kind of res kind of with the catalyst that, you know, I mean, things were always like tense, but kind of the catalyst that kind of broke everything. And, but the thing is, you know, I had a very, very complicated relationship with my family. Um, and, but when it comes to poetry, I think as a writer, and as this work that, you know, as the work is something that comes from the heart, you know, I think a lot about, you know, my responsibility to the reader, my responsibility to the craft, oh. and also, you know, the people that I'm representing. And so, progressively, I found that it is in poetry that I can actually love my family the most. Um, and, yeah, and it's gotten to a point where, you know, um, as long as we don't talk about writing, Expressing my love to a family that mm -hmm. is difficult to express love to outside of my writing world. Yeah, same here, yeah. honestly. Yeah, like yeah. for me, it's just like it's it's sort of like yeah, the sense of like redemption in the sense yeah. that I it does express my love for them and um, it, it's a healing. I, I find that poetry really heals as well. Um, and um, and um, yeah, it's, it's a very healing thing. And um, so yeah, like it, it builds the bridges sometimes, like. Even if it's like the bridge is not built, but it, it does a lot more for me. Like it's, so, I was thinking like oh, I could write it like a memoir, but I'm like I don't know if I feel comfortable writing a memoir. But I definitely feel comfortable writing personal stories uh, through poetry. That's like the only thing yeah. for sure that allows me to yeah. for sure. So if I'm just reading the note, and so if the doors are closing at six forty-five, maybe we should leave some time for yeah. people to just hang out, get some books, you know, yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah? Does everyone feel good about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys thank again you so for coming much. here.